Join us for this video where we'll be firing the oven and with that one firing, baking bread, rolls, cake and making stock. Hi everyone, welcome to this wood-fired workshop at Manor from Devon Cooking School. In this workshop we're going to be talking about batch cooking with the wood-fired oven using just latent or retained heat. So we're going to be using the Bushman Santorini today, which I've preheated and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we're going to clear it out, get rid of all the embers, uh, let it settle down and use the retained heat and run down our battery cooking different things at different temperatures. So we're going to start with a little frat bread, which we've got ready. But then we're going to do some little uh, rolls, some little paver rolls. Then we're going to bake a batch of loaves. Then we're going to cook a cake. And then we're going to cook some stock, all without reheating the oven. So we've charged up our battery and we're going to run it down with successive cooks. And this is all about planning, preparation and have, having everything ready to go. So the bread dough was made last night, it's been shaped this morning, it's risen, it's ready, or it will be ready when the oven becomes ready. Then the oven has been prepared in advance, so we've put energy into our battery, uh, we've charged it up and it's ready now for us to use. So let's have a little look at the oven first. So you can see I've got a little bed of embers around the, the back of the oven there where I've pushed them away. But I've fired this oven up for uh, a couple of hours actually. Uh, so I've put as much heat, pretty much as much heat, into the mass of the oven as it will hold. So underneath the floor here I've got a reading a little bit over 300. That's starting to fall back a bit because I cleared the embers away from the floor because it gets a little bit too hot. And here I've got sort of 230, and here I've got about 230 degrees, all in centigrade. Now this, of course, is reading the temperature with the door wide open, but with that bed of embers in there. So what we're going to do is take the bed of embers out, let the oven settle with the door on, and then recheck what our oven temperature is. So I'm taking these embers out carefully, and putting them into my steel bucket. This is a little bit more precarious, of course, if you're working outdoors and there's a little bit of wind. And for me, the danger is in spilling it onto my wooden floor and not noticing. So I'm always very careful when I do this. And I have a bucket of water standing by just in case I need to dampen anything down on the floor. So I don't need to have that 100% clear, but I want it pretty clear because we are going to be baking directly on the floor later. Now I'm going to put that thermometer back in there so that we can get a, another reading. And I'm going to close the door tight. And I'm going to take my bucket outside so I don't get any carbon monoxide fumes in here. So I'm not going to completely leave that to settle because there's always a little bit of leftover dough and there's always a little bit of something in the fridge to make a little baker's snack. So I found some onions, some garlic oil, some parsley and some end of a bit of cheese and I've just mixed all of those up together and we're going to make a little very quickly cooked flatbread to snack on because we've got a lot of work to do here today. Now the thing we've really got to understand with this type of cooking and with my battery analogy is that all not, not all batteries are the same size. So I've got a small oven here, 60 centimeter internal diameter, 120 kilos of thermal mass. I've got a big oven here, 250 kilos of thermal mass. So this oven is going to hold way more energy than this oven, even though they give out the same heat. So at any given time, they might be giving out the same amount of energy, but there's more energy behind that to come for longer. So this oven I can cook for 12 hours. This oven I can cook for 18 hours. 
and all of your ovens may be a little bit different again and you have to work out how long it takes to A to charge them up and B to run them down. If you put something in the oven uh, and there's too much energy it may burn but if you put two or three or four of those same things in the oven they absorb energy from the oven and they won't burn. So it takes a little bit of getting your head around and a little bit of trial and error with your own oven to figure out exactly how to do this uh, consistently. The reason for letting the oven settle before you really start the baking, I know we're cooking a little flatbread in there, but um, before we do any of the serious baking, is that it lets the temperatures even out. So at the moment we've got hot spots where the embers were, we've got cool spots, and uh, we've got typically very hot surfaces to start with. And as the oven just sits, oven f the energy flows from one place to another until it's very even. Uh, and that takes sort of 15, 20 minutes or so to do that. And it's always a good idea to do that before you start. And because there's a bit of waiting around to do in this process, it's always good to have a little something to snack on as you go. And that looks like a pretty good snack to me. So I've munched my way through half of my absolutely delicious little baker snack there. And now I want to have a look at what's happened to the oven. So the floor temperature has dropped a little bit. And that's as things even out and, and some heat gets drawn out towards the edges of the floor and so on. Uh, it all starts to even out. This temperature is sitting up still a little above 300 degrees. But that thermometer is right next to the wall, so it's getting a lot of heat emanating off the, the wall. I'm also going to test the temperature with my hand. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippis. So three Mississippi oven, sort of 250 to 300 degrees. This temperature reading here, just below 300 on the one in the center and if I check the wall temperatures so I'm going to take the wall temperature at the back 303 305 right hand side 301 left hand side 297 and floor in the middle 302 so they're all hovering around about the 300 degree mark let's call that an average temperature of 300 degrees which means that the air temperature inside there with the door shut will be below that again. So uh, I could knock at least sort of 10% off that. So I'd be looking at a sort of 270, 260, 270 degree oven, which is going to be perfect for baking my little, uh, my little rolls. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. Just let that heat up for a few minutes so that we create a bit of steam because what we've got now is a very, very dry oven. And bread, if I put bread straight into it without a little bit of steam, that bread might crust up too quickly and it won't rise perfectly. So I'm going to leave that for another four or five minutes just to start creating that steam. So a couple of things to think about now. Every time I put something into the oven, it will draw energy out of the oven. So I put one batch of bread in, that takes out a percentage of heat, and we notice a drop in temperature. I bake, put my next load of bread in, that takes out a certain amount of heat, and we'll see another drop in temperature. So if I left the door on and did nothing, I, basically the oven is on standby, my temperature readings would fall very, very slowly. If I start putting different things in there that draw heat out of the oven, my oven temperatures will start to fall more quickly. Also, every time I open the door, I let all the hot air go up the flue and a bunch of cold air comes in and then that cold air has to reheat and that takes energy out of my oven. So if I'm trying to make the most of this energy and, and conserve it as best I can, then the door comes off Something happens quickly and the door goes straight back on. And just to emphasize, in this case, 
the door is completely shut so my flue here at the front of the oven is isolated from the oven so I'm not losing anything up the flue if you've got an oven which has got a damper on it rather than a, a flue that you can isolate with the door then now the damper should be completely shut so we're ready to bake our first batch of bread and we've got these little what I call pavés or pavers so little flat uh, breads made with a kind of a baguette dough uh, and they're going to make fantastic little sandwich rolls later on the, the recipes that we're cooking today are not the most important thing what is important is to think about what cooks at very hot temperature what cooks at a moderately hot temperature what cooks at a cool temperature and what cooks as the heat falls away so this could be focaccias, it could be ciabattas, it could be baguettes this could be sourdoughs, could be white loaves, it could be these nice granary rolls the cake could be any kind of cake could even be a batch of rolls that we wanted to cook soft rather than crusty uh, and the stock that we're going to cook could be a braise, could be a braised shoulder of pork, shoulder of lamb shin of beef, one of those lovely long slow uh, dishes that cook in a cooling oven we're going to go straight in with these guys which are only going to take 10 or 12 minutes to cook I can hear my water sizzling away in there so I know that's up to a, a boil those go in and extra water again just to make sure that the crust is nice and damp to start with and the breads don't harden before they have a chance to rise even though cooking like this means we've got a very stable and a very even oven we have nevertheless got this big cold spot where the door is so I'm still going to give these breads a turnaround halfway through baking but they're looking fantastic so that was about seven minutes and I'm going to go back in for another five minutes and at this point because I want them to be nice and crusty I'm just going to take that water out the rolls have now had 12 minutes superb wonderful I'm gonna put this thermometer back in so that we can get another reading in a few minutes and pop the door back on just check that these rolls are nicely cooked fabulous and pop those on there so that's the first batch done lovely and crusty and not overdone on the bottom and I have found if I don't push those embers off to the sides as I did there's just too much heat in the bottom and my first batch gets a little bit scorched if we look under the floor now we can see that is clearly dropped that was on just over 300 it's now down at 280 so that's definitely fallen 20 plus degrees this one which was uh, I think a little over 300 is now down at sort of two, 260, 270 if we take a look inside that's now much more of a full Mississippi sort of oven and this temperature is sitting at 250 on the centre thermometer we have a look at the walls which if you remember were hovering around the 300 mark we've now got 275 260 265 260 so a little bit sort of 260 270 and then again we're a little bit below that so maybe we're at 240 230 240 which is nice for baking those loaves 
back in with our water to create some steam, door back on and we'll get the loaves ready to go in. So remembering what I said about opening the door and closing the door and trying not to do it too much to waste heat, I'm going to try and put these four loaves in in one go. I haven't got a big baker's peel so uh, I'm going to use silicon again. Silicon is fantastic because it pretty much lets heat instantly into the bottom of your bread. It doesn't really form a barrier uh, but it does allow you to transport things quite readily. So I can tip out my four loaves which are nicely risen and ready to go. I can slash them all and then with a fair wind I can lift the whole lot, take the door off once and pop them all in. on tight. The bread has now had just over 30 minutes. As always things tend to cook a little bit a little bit more quickly in the wood-fired oven. So whereas indoors I might be leaving these for 35 or 40 minutes in the wood-fired oven 30. Sounding fabulous. Beautifully risen, great colour, lovely smell. So we're going to check the oven again, see if it's ready for our cake. Looking at the temperatures now, a little above 200 deep below the floor, 200 on that one. Using my hand, more of a sort of five Mississippi, and on the walls, 230, 230, 230, 220. So 225, take our few percents off that for the difference between the air and the um, wall temperature. So we might be slightly above 200 degrees, which is possibly a little bit hot, you might think, for a cake. So it's not the end of the world because if we leave the door ajar, as we bake this cake, we'll just lose that extra few degrees. So maybe a little something just to hold that open ever so slightly. And if the top is browning too much after 10 or 15 minutes, I'll put a little bit of foil over the top. So I'm keeping this door a finger's width ajar. And on here it's just holding just below 200 degrees and that's kind of perfect uh, for baking this cake because that'll be reading ever so slightly over because it's right next to the wall so now when I bring that off it's not browning too quickly but it's browning nicely so I'm going to give that a spin around just for even cooking back and front slide it back in and keep the door exactly where it was because that was working very well. And keeping that door just a finger's width open, I mean that's just a, a micro adjustment that I've made there to get the exact temperature that I want. And don't be afraid to do that because that's what's going to make the difference between cooking something okay and cooking it perfectly. So if I have that door shut now, I know I'd have a little bit too much colour on the top, it'd be too dark there'd be a little bit of bitterness in there. It wouldn't be spot on. Keeping the door a little bit open, it's browning perfectly, it's going to be great. This thermometer now is, is falling down below 200 and this one is definitely sitting down below 200. So we're now certainly falling below 200 degrees. But our cake has done fantastically well. Beautiful. And the next thing we're going to put in is stock. And 200 degrees or just below 200 degrees, which we are now, is a little bit hot for this stock. However, in my stock pot here, I've got three big bones and a lot of water. And 
the energy required to bring that stock up to temperature or to bring the water up to temperature will mean that the oven will drop and then we'll be in that nice sort of uh, mid 100 zone where it's going to simmer quietly and we can leave it for a long time and typically we would leave this for uh, eight ten hours overnight quite happily I'm going to put a little bit of foil on top of the stock so there's no chance of it uh, evaporating into the oven so with one firing of this oven we've baked bread we've baked buns we're baked, cooking our stock we've made a cake we even made a little snack and if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our youtube channel for regular updates and if you've got any questions about this or any aspect of wood-fired cooking please put it in the comments below and we will get back to you thanks for watching see you next time